Strider's back with another He-Man game. This time, it's Masters of the Universe, the power of He-Man for your Atari 2600. So let's go ahead and take the game, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Masters of the Universe, the power of He-Man, was published by Mattel and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is a port of its Intellivision counterpart and based on the popular early 80s cartoon and toy line. According to the former Intellivision Lives website, this, along with its Intellivision brother, were the first cartridge-based video games to give credit to the design team on the packaging. The manual states the following. The object of the game is to score as many points as possible while guiding He-Man in battle against his evil foes. During the first half of the game, He-Man is at the controls of his trusty Wind Raider. He must fly the 30 miles from the workshop of Man-at-Arms to Castle Grayskull. Nearly every mile of this terrain could end the quest of He-Man. Evil warriors hurl deadly warp trackers and energy bolts at He-Man as he flies overhead. He defends himself with the ion cannon, mutron bombs, and fearless flying maneuvers. With enough skill and luck, you can fly He-Man to Castle Grayskull, but that's only half the battle. Once you land the Wind Raider on Castle Grayskull, you are magically projected inside a dungeon room to battle Skeletor. The room has two moving walls. Each wall has three gaps. The walls are always in motion and the gaps are never still. He-Man uses the gaps to reach Skeletor. Skeletor is moving and firing laser blasts at He-Man while he tries to pass through the gaps. He-Man defends himself from the laser blast with his power sword. If He-Man touches Skeletor, the victory screen plays and you can move on to the next level. The game also came with a mini comic. King of Castle Grayskull, which also came packaged with some of the early action figures like Man-at-Arms and Tila. The story in the comic has nothing to do with the game and is pretty different from the cartoon as well. Masters of the Universe is an action game for one player only. The left difficulty switch controls the starting level. When it's in the standard B position, which is usually for a beginner mode, it starts you on level 3. In the A position, which is usually for the advanced mode, it starts you on the easier first level. The right difficulty pauses the game in the B position and unpauses it in the A position. This is actually a poor setup, since for most games, you want to start with both switches in the B position. But if you do that here, you will start your game already paused on the hardest difficulty. If you try to play this game but it won't start, check your difficulty switches. The TV type switch uses rapid fire for the Wind Raider in color mode and single firing in black and white mode. The game is played in two phases, each one programmed by a different programmer. The first phase is the Wind Raider phase. Here you must fly the Wind Raider 30 miles to the right or left, your choice, starting at Man-at-Arms Workshop and ending at Castle Grayskull. Points in the game are also energy units. If you fly back to Man-at-Arms Workshop, you can hover over the top to exchange points for extra Wind Raiders if you lost any for the cost of 100 points per level. So on level 3 they would cost 300 points each. However, you can never have more than 3 Wind Raiders, which is what you start with. Personally, I never used it since it would require backtracking and every time you start a level, you always start with 3 ships. You fly with the joystick and press the button to fire either your ion cannon or to drop a Mutron bomb, which I believe are bombs made by Eternian cows. As you fly, you will face various evil warriors who can shoot both straight energy bolts or spinning warp trackers that will home in on you. When a warp tracker is in the air, pressing the button will only fire ion cannon shots. Shooting a warp tracker will get you 100 energy units. When a warp tracker is not on screen, pressing the button will drop a Mutron bomb that will leave a crater that is somewhat movable with your joystick while it's on the screen. Getting an enemy to fall into a crater gets you 200 energy units. If you drop a bomb on an energy bolt shot by your enemy, you will get 300 energy units. Once you reach Castle Grayskull and hover right over it, you will get 100 energy units for any remaining Wind Raiders and move on to the next phase. Here you're in a room with Skeletor and some moving walls with openings that came out of a Sword Quest game. Skeletor shoots laser bolts. If one hits you, you get pushed back and you lose 100 energy units. You can, however, block them with your sword by pressing the button. Doing so earns you 100 energy units. If the wall touches you, you lose another 100 energy units and you also lose 100 energy units from time to time if you take too long. Losing all of your energy in this phase will end your game. If, however, you reach and touch Skeletor, you'll be shown raising your sword above your head, revealing fabulous secret powers. So what, did you just transform into He-Man? Have you been Prince Adam this whole time up until this point? 
Now that I think about it, you do look more like Prince Adam than He-Man in the room with Skeletor. After this, you return to the first phase at increased difficulty with your Wind Raider supply fully restocked. Since your score can both increase and decrease when you lose your last life, the game will show you a peak score as well as your current one, although they might be the same. Graphically speaking, I really like the intro and the raised sword sequence, as well as the Wind Raider, although I wish the enemies looked a little less generic and at least colored to resemble some of He-Man's famous enemies like Beast Man, Merman, and Stinkor. Sound and music-wise, the game has a great rendition of the He-Man theme, okay sound effects, and a death sound that will remind you of Pitfall. Family friendly wise, the game contains some mild action and would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceCharring.com, the game has a value of $16 loose, $85 complete, and $190 new. So what did I think of Masters of the Universe The Power of He-Man? There are some problems for sure, the difficulty switch setup is backwards. Flying takes some getting used to, especially with controlling craters and how turns seem to affect everything around you in an unnatural sense. However, the biggest weakness of the game is the difficulty, especially after level 1. To get rid of an enemy, you need to use a bomb, but you can't bomb them when there's a warp tracker on the screen, something that shows up almost immediately after the enemy does. And when you shoot a tracker, there's a delay before you can drop a bomb, and guess what? On the higher levels, once the delay is over, there's already another tracker about to appear. I found this to make the game insanely hard starting on level 2, but despite my gripes, I kind of liked the game. Once I got used to flying and got a rhythm down, dropping bombs in anticipation of an enemy, I had fun in the first level. And I like that the game has two phases, not just one. I'm just bummed that it gets so difficult after the first level. It's a game I could play more, but is held back due to how quickly the difficulty increases after that first level. So where am I going to rank Masters of the Universe, The Power of He-Man? This one's going to be somewhere around the middle of the pack. I do like Quick Step more at 149, but I will put this over Death Star Battle at 150. So the 218 games are now ranked for the Atari 2600, He-Man is running through rainbow walls at the 150 position. He-Man is fun once you get used to it until you reach the second level. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. Click the bell so you don't miss any future videos and sign up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer just like Jan or Sean did to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Now in the spirit of the cartoon, it's time for today's moral. In today's story, Skeletor used laser blasts against He-Man. Lasers can be very helpful. They can help people see better and get whiter teeth, but you should never shoot a laser at another person unless they're already protected by a power sword that can deflect them. And that's one to grow on. See you next time.